So before we define those alignments, let's take a look at a couple of things about the surface and point how um, instead of just using contours here, um, we may want to look at the surface in a number of ways, uh, kind of take an assessment of what we're dealing with here. And so first thing is this surface is using a half foot and five contours, right? It's a style in the jump. And um, let's take a look at it simply as triangles as points. And uh, we'll move things aside so we can see. As you can see, this is a fairly rough surface since it's all point data um, with a little bit of figure data that came directly associated with those points. So um, we have some fairly rough, it's a fairly rough surface at this point. It is probably going to need some tuning up by adding some break lines. And if we uh, hop back to contours, our contours again for one second, um, where's my top? There you are. And hit apply. Um, for example, um, and I'm going to have to say OK because I'm not pinned to the right spot. But if we look down here, um, we got some funny things going on with the contours. Not enough data, so some triangles in this area are connecting across. And we're either going to have to add lines, add break lines, or do something uh, to actually fix what's going on here since all these are being dragged these half foot contours are being dragged improperly. So here's one of our things. We sort of got a hump. Uh, is there a hole? And actually, if we look at contour elevations, um, we would see that they're very, very teeny little differences here. We're on one side or another side on survey points. And um, because of the fact that uh, the feature lines or the figures from the survey or the point data is pretty spread out, um, we're, we're getting some funny triangles in this area. And let's take a look at that again, just as an example. And we'll take points here. And you'll see we have pretty wide areas with pretty big planes here. There's a, this is almost flat, so we end up with some funniness in the final contours that probably isn't true, maybe true. Um, there's just not enough data in here, and we probably have to densify things uh, to make the pictures turn out better, okay, and um, actually get a better uh, pavement volume out of the, our process. Another um, useful little surface uh, value is to use slope arrows here um, and, and contours. And we're going to run that as an analysis. And we're going to just cut down the range a little bit. And you'll see, so I have anything that's red, it's about 1%. Um, yellow up to a percent and a half. I could tweak these values. Green up to 3. And the darker we get, uh, we got those cyans that are about three to five percent, and then the really steep stuff, which I should see on the edges of um, my roadway where my curb and gutter are, um, are going to be this dark blue and purple. And we're going to apply that. And once again, uh, this just gives me a quick pick. And once again, you can see in this area that the slope, instead of being away from the crown, is down street. Okay, and so uh, something squirrely in this area, I'm probably going to have to come back and fix it. Just wanted to note it. It's the kind of thing you can use the surface engine for, uh, find little busts and breaks. And we would probably want to uh, do this, pan around and take a look at all the places that are critical. So uh, looks like streets here. This is a little strange here in this area. It looks like we're actually going towards the crown, right? Um, is, is, is that true? Is that just something that where we gathered the data created this strangeness? Um, but it looks like our, our curbs look pretty good. Uh, we're getting those purple arrows that we want at all the locations. Um, check down here in the knuckle. Um, looks like from uh, this point here, uh, we got a fairly, remember that was science, or a fairly steep grade here, right? Um, the light greens, right, um, looking pretty good. 
So taking a pan that way, um, I can make an assessment, and this will actually show you things that are strange um, if you practice using it as a tool. There's another um, nifty uh, surface tool that not too many people use because uh, it doesn't look useful. Um, it's, uh, we'll go over here and change to that style, and we'll use directions. And what directions do is say what, what direction does the triangle slope. So um, once again, we can uh, run the analysis. We're going to just cut it down to four. So effectively, it uses the surface and basically takes the boundary of the surface and makes that the zero degrees. And then we're going to just chop it up into four uh, directions. So it's anything, any surface, any surface plane that slopes up to 90 degrees is going to be red. And if you could follow this in your head, so this is a quadrant breakdown almost. It's not quite vertical. In other words, it's not quite at zero, zero because the surface uh, boundary isn't at zero, zero. And that's where it gets that data. And we can apply that and say okay and once again we should see things like uh, this is all north sloping this is all south sloping that looks reasonable um, as we said once again that funny little area is sloping in the it's sloping to the east and not probably what's true again a north and south here or a north and east slope in that funny little area. Um, so I probably got some issues. So I wanted to point out that that tool can be extremely useful. The directions uh, style can be pretty useful if you understand what's going on and know what you're looking at. It takes a little practice to look at it, but it does indeed help us be able to identify problems in a surface which is always important in terms of our QA.